like this cup. Not bad. You know what? Okay. With the cup thing, yeah. it keeps the fluid too hot for too long. Yeah. So what do we what do we do about this? Because it's either it's we like you and me. You no, and no, I. no. This is an issue. Because like you, if you use a normal mug, yeah, it gets cold too fast. Yeah. But if I use this, it's hot for way too long. Yeah. So I don't know what to do here. I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm gonna could, have a sip. You could use a different cup. But then it gets. By the time the podcast is done, I'll yeah. still have like a little bit of coffee left, probably, and then it's too, it's like cold. I know that's problems. I know first world problems. I know. So I'm gonna take. A I don't like those kind of cups. Things. I don't like the metal, the aluminum. Is that what it is? Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. I know. Uh, it gets that metallic taste. Yeah. If it's not, or if it's not coffee, if it's water. Yeah. Which I feel like that can't be good. If it's uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't think you know, so. If you can taste the yeah, I wouldn't think so. I don't know, but anyhow, um, but apparently it's better than plastic. Well, this is the other thing. Well, that's if you care about it. But it's like every, everything kills you guys. So I don't know. Yeah. But like I need to use something to hold my yeah. fluid. <laughs> yeah. I can't <laughs> drink water yeah. out of your hands. Get a really long tongue. Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tiger just with the, the tongue. Yeah. Just go to the water hole. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's enough of that. Um, yeah. What's up? What's up with you? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. The Guelph Storm season has come to an end. Yeah. They battled. Yeah, they did. They battled. What a year for the boys. They, you know, I'm going to sound like a, a whiny dad. I'm not just being realistic. I mean, the, the team couldn't catch a break from day one. Not that you're looking for breaks, but you're looking for maybe some, it's something nice to, get a to bounce, go right, yeah. right? So, you know, you start off with uh, Cam having surgery. So he's one of the... Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah, about that. Start, too, yeah. You start the year off with one of your top D NHL draft picks out from the beginning of the season till. February, that's tough. And then as soon as he comes back, uh, the one of the the best defensemen in the league goes out with for four weeks with a, a thumb injury. He had to had to get surgery, and in between that, the all kinds of injuries and suspensions, and you know, and then they go into the playoffs with against a very very good team and like battled hard, but went in with uh, missing your starting goalie, missing you know several players. So six, seven players at one time. So, but the kids and the young kids on the team battled, man. They did really well. But you know what? As as the as the series goes on, um, that series, the first three three games, even the fourth game, it was good. But the, the first three games could have went either way. Um, some penalties, some you know, little little bit of you know the 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 better team on paper won which the attrition of this over the course of a series probably would have happened that way anyways because the Sioux built a team that should go very deep. And, you know, over time, that probably is the way it was going to end up anyways. But um, but good battle. I was really happy with the kids. You know, the kids. I talked to them like they're three. Yeah. But they're I was kids. battled. They battled, man, you know. And uh, they battled. The coaches battled to the end. And, you know, what are you going to do? So tough. Third year done now for my kid. So now – Really weird, dude. This is a, no, 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 no. This is this is really weird because you go into this thing and you, 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 you of course, you're so excited about uh, for the family, right? And you meet, you know, some of the new people. So the kids that Charlie broke into the league with, because Charlie was very young when he started, are with the exception of Cam on that team, I believe. So it's Ch- Cam, Charlie, and Migs um, are the only ones left from Charlie's original group. So it's like his buddies, his good, good, good buddies. Yeah, they're all gone. Are are gone, and and depending on who they bring back as overages and stuff, so it's it's weird. Yeah, seriously. it's it's a weird thing, but it goes by so fast. I know, and how and, you fast. know we so we talk about that all the time, and I don't think people really understand it. It goes by so fast. You know, even this year it was like, it seemed like Christmas came very quickly, and then the second half just blew by, and it's like wow, yeah. it's unbelievable. I so, know, yeah. crazy man. Like that's yeah. I remember sitting doing the podcast when Charlie got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. So. But it goes, it goes by so fast and, you know, you don't have a ton of time, but then you have a lot of time. It's uh, fast. <laughs> it's fast and slow. It's fast, fast and slow. And, slow. Yeah. and, and but you got to make it count when you're there. Yeah, for sure. Which sure. part of our podcast today will help some guys out with that. Yeah, yeah. For Parts sure. of it. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the PowerTech Online Membership Program. If you've been listening to Andy and I wondering, hey, how are they able to get all this podcast content out there? Well, that's because of our members. 
For just $9.99 a month, you can get access to our online video library, including hundreds of videos of Coach Andy teaching and have the option for consultation calls with Andy or myself to go over anything you need. We can cover training, nutrition, coaching, parenting, agents, the junior college hockey path, whatever's of interest to you. You'll also be able to participate in our popular Ask Me Anything episodes, have access to special discount codes, and be given priority for any PowerTech in-person camps or events. If you like what we're doing here and you want to support us, this is the best way to do it. Visit powertechhockey.ca slash memberships or find the link in the description of this video to learn more. So you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you, I know you got a couple things you wanted to talk about, so I'll let you rip on that before we kind of get into it. Well, I got, I got like, I think we're, we're tying three different things in together here. And one of the things is I think what we talked about, what I, my, my kind of thought patterns that were for this podcast was, um, you added the last piece, which would be, you know, because we were tying into last week's, you know, tryouts and stuff like that. But, um, and I was just talking to a group the other day because we're doing our pre tryout skates about when you're playing in these games, play the way you're going to play. Don't try to do anything more. That's what a lot of people do in trials. They try to make it an individual effort, which I get. I get it, but if you're if you're not playing your role or playing the way you play, then it's you're not you're not being you, right? So um, we're gonna tie that in after uh, to give you some things that um, will help you. Um, but before that, I wanted to. There was two things. I was talking to a watching a game with a NHL scout the other day, and then he made a comment that. I was so happy to hear, to be honest. And then that'll be second. And the first thing was um, just these some of these guys that are signing in the NHL. And we've talked about, uh, I know people that listen to the podcast have heard me talk about Arbor Jackeye, how he signed. Like So again, just to go back to it, never drafted in the Ontario Hockey League, played his whole career overage. Uh, his overage year he signed with the Montreal Canadiens and Basically, no, not basically. Next year, he made the Montreal Canadiens, and he's been there for his second year now. And I love that story. Like in, in, we've said, I'm not going to go beat the uh, dead horse right now, but I love that story because, you know, there's a lot of questions in that. Why? How can he go through three, four years in the OHL, be a monster the way he was, and not get drafted? Like 32 teams for th- three years said no. No, not a chance. Well, you have to say not a chance. Yeah. Right. That's the answer, right? Like, no, no, he can't I mean, play. people did say that. Well, they had to. Well, yeah. I was talking to one scout. And he said, yeah, he's just the most improved player that he's ever seen in the OHL. So to go from the, from the OHL straight to the NHL without ever being drafted in the OHL and the NHL, that's incredible. It's a great story. And then to make a, have the presence that he has in the NHL, fantastic. So another defenseman that um, just signed in the NHL was Connor Punnett. And uh, again, I was watching, so I've, I've been watching the OHL very closely for three years because of my kid. And day one, I'm like, that 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 kid can play. Like, no, I shouldn't say he can play in the NHL. There's something there. So there's another kid. He was a first round in the OHL and then never drafted in the NHL. But then he signed with Dallas uh, maybe three weeks ago. And I'm like, yeah, of course. So how does he go through 32 teams, right? And then finally someone says, we're going to sign him. Well, and, and there's a there's a common theme here with these guys. And then another person that just signed, I think it was yesterday, maybe didn't sign yesterday, maybe just came out yesterday, was Arbor Jack Eye's brother, Florian. And I'm really happy for, like, I don't know them. I don't know them at all. But, like, when I saw it, I'm like, yes, yes, I'm happy. And I'm happy because he plays a style, like another kid that wasn't drafted in the OHL. And I was actually talking to uh, a guy I know, and I said, what – uh I said, is Arbor's brother, like, what's he like? He goes, ah, he's just a skilled guy. Like, he's, you know, he's okay, but he's just this this skilled guy. And maybe he was small and skilled or whatever. But again, it was that when he came into the league, he was probably 6'2", for sure, like last year. So he missed his first, not underage year, but the next year. So he got drafted last year in the fourth round. And a lot of people said it's because of his brother. It's like, maybe that helped. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the, the family thing, the late blooming thing, the the genetic thing helped. But the bottom line was he played his first year in the OHL as the underdog that had a couple of walk-ons. You know, I think it was I, actually I know Kitchener, Kitchener Saginaw because I know people, Kitchener Saginaw and uh, then Hamilton signed with Hamilton. But he went there and he did what he needed to do to get noticed, and he played a hard game, and he had some skill, can make plays. So this year, 
ended up with 30 some goals and like nice point totals. And he played that hard power forward game. And I was watching and I go, if anyone says that he got drafted because of his brother, you're full of shit. He got drafted because he's a really good player. And, you know, Montreal obviously saw something in, in him, but there is, it was worth the bet because he was willing to do things that other people weren't like a lot of people aren't willing to do get in the dirty areas, get in a scrap once in a while, fight, get in other people's skin, make plays did as well. But anyways, my point to, to that one was I'm really happy for that family because, you know, and I, I guess it's a lesson for everybody. It's like, you just have to play being drafted in the first round, second round, third round, whatever, not getting drafted. Like at the end of the day, it really, it really doesn't matter. And now people could sit here and say, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. You have to be able to perform. And I'm just, I love the story of the family. You know, the immig- the immigrants that come over and, you know, hardworking people and the kids obviously grew up with a little bit of grit to them, obviously. And uh, they, they both play with the sandpaper and they, they're against all odds guys. And, you know, maybe, maybe Florian looks at his older brother and goes, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. It was an inspiration. And maybe he wouldn't have had that if his brother didn't do it. But nonetheless, he did the, the job that he needed to do. And without knowing him, again, I've said this about Arbor Jack, I would never met the kid, but I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them as human beings for, for, for doing it the hard way and uh, proving people wrong. And, um, you know, he's going to get his opportunity. I'm just, I, I, I'm so happy for guys like that. Yeah. But it's funny because. People... And, and sorry, just the, the, I use those two guys because it's like in one family, this almost the same thing happened. And um, there's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stories out there. And I look at a lot of the players I know, and it's like very easy to get poopy pants about not getting your shifts, not getting the glory, not getting this and other people are getting it. And, and there's something to be said for just playing, just play your game and, and, and get better and, and let it take over at some point. Yeah. Sorry to cut no, you off. No, so like, I just want to kind of tail on how you mentioned, you no know, people saying it's because of his brother and again, like guaranteed he started getting more attention once, uh, Arbor started getting more, well, once Arbor signed, but you got one brother that comes through for sure. You're getting some attention as the brother of a guy it that's can done help. it, right? It yeah. for sure can help. But for people that say it's because of, like at a certain point that runs out, you know? So, and, and it happens right from, from minor hockey. It's like, oh, he made the team because his dad is friends with the coach. And then, oh, he got drafted because this kid knows this kid. Or he gets a, got a tryout here because his dad works with this guy or whatever. And like for the people that keep saying it all the way up the chain, it's like you can't fake signing an NHL contract, man. You have to be good. You can't, you can't fake it. So even if it, if it affords you a second look or something, to your point, is that you still have to perform. You have to perform. At the end of the day, you can make whatever excuse you want for whoever you want. You have to be somewhat able to play at an extremely high level. Even for guys whose dads buy teams. And it runs out at a certain point unless the kid is good enough. And then if they're good enough, they're good enough. It's not because the dad bought the team. It's because they were good enough. You know, and there's countless examples of that. Well, my kid, over. my kid heard it. We heard it. Yeah, for my sure. My son got drafted because, because of me. It's like, ooh, what guy is listening to me about my son? Well, even going, even going into the, going into the draft, because I was with you guys the whole way. It's like, you had no idea. Like, you didn't know, you didn't know if he was going to go here or there. You had a ballpark and that was all you knew about anything. And so even if you did, like, let's say even you, if you did, like the reason he went to Guelph is because if he is to get drafted or not, you have no idea. No idea. You have no idea. No clue. Right? You talk with scouts all the time. You're talking with I'm NHL scouts with all them. the time. You're friends with them. You have no it, idea. It's funny because this year especially, I I tried, like I have some friends and I saw one the other day that scouts for a team. And uh, so we we talked, it just happened the last couple of weeks actually. And they came over and the one guy goes, you lose my phone? And I said, no, I said, it's my son's, it's my son's draft year. I'm not going to call you. Like, I don't ever want it to come across. Like I want information or anything like that. And he goes, no, no, I know. And then I talked to another one. I, I said, like, I said, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but you know, we've seen each other a, a million times this year. And I just say hi to you. I said, but this time it was unavoidable. I said, I, I'm just, it's, it's a different year and I don't ever want to come across the wrong way. And he goes, no, no, we're friends, man. And I, go, I know. I mean, we never talk about certain things. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you. Um, yeah. you had a, what, what was the other thing? I forget what else you were going to say. 
uh, after talking about Jack Eye. Um, what was the other piece that you want to talk about, or was that both? Oh, both? oh, so the one was, uh, and I think this is important um, because I, I was at a game. It was game four, game four of the playoffs, and one of my friends that uh, um, he was he stood where I stand. And I always make sure we kept our distance, but this time we're a little bit closer. And someone scored on the other team. And uh, they, so I, I was just watching, not really paying attention to the, the body language and stuff. So this is, this is cool because this is a scout, an NHL scout for whatever, it doesn't matter what team. And he's watching and what he noticed about that goal was obviously the goal. But he gives me a slap and he goes, Unbelievable. I go, what's that? He goes, this kid over here does all the work. And this kid that scores the goal skates away from his team to look at the crowd and like to make sure he didn't even go thank the guy for the goal. And he goes like, it drives me nuts. And he was laughing. He goes, but he was like pissy laughing. And I go, I know. And we talked about it for a few minutes and it, and then I saw a goal last night where a guy scored an overtime goal and he skated right away from his team and he shushed the crowd. It's like, if you think people don't notice that stuff, the people that matter do. And does it mean that you're not going to get drafted? Does it mean you're not going to make a team? No, not necessarily, but it's a thing, right? You know what I mean? It's a thing where, you you know, like, what are you, what are you concerned about? Like, is, like I, and that's what blows my mind is like, is that where your, is that where your mind goes when you score a big goal or a, a, pro, um, a playoff goal and you're concerned about yourself? Like you, you, you can't just celebrate your team. Thanks for the pass, good play, that kind of stuff. You skate off to yourself and you make it like a, a small little sideshow. And because it's a, something that drives me absolute bananas. And I know some people are going to say, let kids do it the way they want and all that stuff. Yeah, I know. I know. But to me, if I'm picking, like if it's my team, if it's a teammate, if I'm coaching the team, if I'm scouting, that shit stands out. It sticks out like a sore thumb to me. And I don't like it. And a lot of people don't. So, so just to finish on that, is that if if an NHL scout is standing beside me and he actually, it's bothering him, where he laughs at it and just shakes his head, maybe don't, maybe don't. And then my my next point to all that stuff is like, there's a lot of things that a lot of people in general society will say, well, yeah, where they're just kids or they need to celebrate or they're being individuals and stuff like that. That's fine, but it rubs people the wrong way with people that matter yeah you know sure. what i mean well my thing my thing with that too is it's so funny this so this morning um we're at the we're at the gym and sometimes the guys from the academy they bring the big speaker down to their dressing room and then they won't bring it up I, they just like leave it down there so in the morning i'll get there and there's no speaker in the gym so i have to me- a message in our group chat I'm like can somebody please bring up the speaker and i'm walking back through the class today like which is kind of the way they have to walk and this one kid that always does everything exactly who I would expect to bring up the speaker is the one who brings up the speaker. So he brings it up and he's walking in and I, I say to him, I'm like, oh yeah, I was like, nobody else could grab the speaker today, eh? And he goes, no, they were all just arguing about who should bring up the speaker. <laughs> so he just grabbed the speaker and brought it up and that leaves a, leaves a mark, you know, it leaves a mark. And there's, this is kind of starts to tail into what I wanted to talk about because you know, again, with tryouts and evaluations and people trying to make teams and all this, going to camps, leaving an impression, however you want to take kind of what we're talking about. There's there's details to the game, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, whether it's during your shift or between shifts, on the bench, after you score, whatever. There are details that important people actually pay attention to. And one thing that it's going to, this is going to stick with me for the rest of my life in hockey now is um, talking to one of the head scouts for an NHL team about two players that we had. Um, and he was talking about one of them in particular. And he said, the kids details are just so good. And it was, that's the first time I'd ever heard someone say it like that with those terms, the details are so good. And that's the perfect way to describe this player that he was talking about. It's not a lot of flash. It's not a lot of, um, that kind of, you know, it's not flash is, is one way of saying it, but even like that, just that buzz, that constant buzz when they play, he wasn't that guy. You know, he wasn't that guy. But he always got the job done in the smallest of ways. And I remember one play with this 
particular kid I'm talking about, he was in the neutral, and this is something people don't notice, right? He's in the neutral zone. He, there was a turnover that he didn't create, but the puck ended up kind of dribbling over to him. So he stopped his feet. It was right between the blue line and the red line, stopped his feet. Puck was on a stick and he made a three foot sauce pass over a guy's stick to his buddy that was breaking with speed in the neutral zone, you know? And it was a, it was a, not it wasn't a pass that would make you go like holy like what a pass no, it was just it's just like play. a little pot little smart yeah. play but yeah. look at everything he did that got hit that play you know he tracked where he needed to be he stopped his feet to make sure he could get that puck and then he executed a difficult play in a small area to make sure that the transition kept going that player he never would have thought all of those things but he just does he just does those things and that's what when we talk about you know, these little things that people notice, the details that people notice, it's things like that. And the reason I think it's important to talk about for, you know, parents, players listening, going into tryouts is if you have a coach that is worth their salt or they know anything worth their salt or they know, <laughs> or they know you know, they know about hockey, these are the things they key in on. Because the obvious is the obvious. Can you pass, skate, shoot? Like that stuff is obvious, stick handle, all that stuff. But it's those extra things, you know. It's those those little in between plays. I was just talking with uh, with uh, Kyle Macri. Kyle, he doesn't like that his name's Kyle. He told me <laughs> he told me the other day. I wouldn't like I called, it either. I called him Kyle on the podcast, and he's like, "What do you call me, Kyle, for?" It's Mac. Just call me Mac. So anyways, he's talking to Mac, and he's looking at video of some guys that are potentially coming as international players. And so he sent me like, cause he's right into the details. He loves right? the video. Oh, so he sent me a paragraph on each of these kids using like shitty video from wherever they're from in their minor hockey loops, trying to evaluate these kids. And everything he says has to do with details. Like everything he says has to do with, yes. Okay. Can they skate after we get past that? Do they know how to support pucks? Do they know how to support pucks on the D side? Right. Do they know where to go? Do they have any sense of where to be? they finish hits do they finish plays how's their competitiveness and these are all things that are not your basic skill set so if you don't know hockey or you're not used to that for parents for players it's important that you start to get used to that start to think about it because as tryouts come up camps and all this stuff these things are what come into play more than the basics because the foundations everyone should be there you know so then what do you have on top of that is kind of i guess my point right yeah i was so i was doing a drill this morning with the two groups it was a simple not yeah, it was simple. The simple enough drill. So basically, the de- the details of the drill were you would uh, start in a corner, climb up, climb up a wall, skating, and 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 hook and get a pass. The next point of that was to get a shot off quick with your feet moving inside the dot lanes. After the shot, come back around, climb up the wall with a with a cutback, get inside the dot lanes. So how do you get inside the dot lanes? You have to move your feet. So get inside the dot lane. So like little details were get high enough so that you're in a good shooting spot, whatever. Next one was to stop in front of the net for a tip. And the next detail was hard to the dot so you can get a shot off quick. So the point is, so as the kids were doing the drill, you could see the habits that were not there. And one of the habits was just, I mean, listening exactly what the, the drill was, first of all, which, okay, that's fine. But it was, number one was to have your feet moving. And there's so many times when kids think that they're moving, but they're not, or they just choose not to. So that was one I had to correct. And then it was getting to the dot lanes hard. And and so when I explained the drill to them, I said, like, when we're doing drills like this, it's, it's not about doing a drill. It's about finding what in the drill applies to a game or what purpose it serves, right? So there's a couple, I don't have to go through the details of what the purpose was there. But I told them, I said, like, the part that you're not doing well is the part that actually matters. It's when you're when you're going to shoot or, or coming out of a turn, it's important that you have some separation speed. Doesn't mean you're taking, well, obviously, if you're in a small area, you can't skate for very long, but it's important that your feet move for two, three steps, one or two at least, to separate yourself, right? Number two is uh, stopping at the net and coming back. The reason I wanted you to come back to the dot real hard is is to teach you to get into open space quickly, to find things. So to your point, it's not about skating. It's not about all your skill level. So what I said to them was, you could be the most skilled guy in the world, 
maybe I'm exaggerating. You can be very, very skilled. But if you can't get to spots where you're going to be able to use your skill, then your skill is kind of useless, right? So you could, you could have a great shot. But if you're not willing to work and fight off a body or work to find three, three four feet of ice to get the shot off, and you never, don't get past it because you're always covered, well, then your skill is useless, right? And if you if you if you're wondering why some guys can score goals around the net, like Zach Hyman, for example, for Edmonton, he was never supposed to be a fifty goal scorer. He was barely supposed to make the NHL, but he worked on things every year, and he's so good at getting in front of the net. But it's like not getting in front of the net; it's getting in front of the net and then doing intelligent and working hard, yeah. finding the little details to find himself open. So I think that you're saying like a high, high, high percentage of his 50-some goals this year and every year are within seven feet of the net. That's a skill. That's crazy, man. That's a skill, but that's a hard work skill. And it's an intelligence thing, but it's details, right? So the the point is, is that if you copied his game, would you, would you, would you be able to score those goals? Like, well, you'd have to be willing to do the work. So that's that's what we're talking about the little details. It's like it's not about necessarily being a great skater. Great skating is good, but if you cannot execute it, if you always skate yourself into a corner, that doesn't really mean anything. If you're trying to do it in an individual effort all the time, it doesn't really mean anything. And you could be a a really good hitter, but you, if you don't can't read a game or put yourself in a situation where you can check someone, then it's it's a useless. It's useless, right? Yeah. And and stick handling in a phone booth is only only so good some of the times. It's good, but it's not the whole game. It's the little things that make all the difference in the world and making an identity for yourself and having success. Yeah, like the the thing with hockey is it's so multifaceted. Like there's so many moving parts to it. And for young kids coming up, even for like I remember in junior, I didn't know a lot of this stuff just because no one had ever laid out the connections for me. So I think like my thing is now, I guess what I see my job as being like, we've talked about before, what you think like you want to make people better and whatever. And I think that I feel the same way, but now like, how do you do that? It's like, how can I translate what I know now that I've been through it and have experience doing it and have studied it? How can I translate that message to the people that need it so that I can make them better? That's kind of the, the question. And that's kind of like the question as a parent, that's kind of the question as a coach or whatever, anyone who's in a teaching role of any sort, that's kind of what you need to be asking yourself as a general question. So for me, I I did this exercise with the kids today. I was actually more for myself than for them, honestly, but I think it was still helpful for them. Um, So these were some of the students in the grade school at the academy, and they had just done these progress reports about how they feel their school is going and where they feel like they've improved. And so I wanted to do it as a group and have each of them answer like I had their papers to look at, but I wanted them to tell me one, because I want other kids to hear what other kids are struggling with. And two, I want them to see the overlap of who's struggling with what. So that's why I thought it was like kind of a good exercise. But then my last piece of it was I wanted to show them like why, what they're learning and where they are getting better is actually useful. And, and I tried to relate it to hockey because that's what makes them care. So, so to back up, this was the, they brought in a paper of... They did it with their teacher, like a progress with their teacher, report. But you asked them to bring it in. The, the teacher gave them to me to look at. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So they sat and did like a one-on-one with the teacher. The teacher filled out the paper and then the teacher gave, gave me the papers to just review like kind of where the kids are at. So I sat with all the kids to this morning and I was having them recount like, okay, what did what do you feel like you've improved on and how did you improve on it? So each kid went kid by kid and they were all saying skills like one of them was grammar one of them was math one of them was writing whatever one after the other so i had them tell me what it was why they felt like they improved on it and then tried to get them to point out how it was useful in a way that they care about so for writing for example um, i was explaining how writing is basically thinking like if you can't put a sentence on a piece of paper that makes sense that means your brain is not generating a sentence that makes sense you know so you need to tighten that up uh, presenting in front of in front of the class was another one. Where is that useful? Well, I do an interview. Yeah, when might you do an interview with a hockey team? That's actually important. 
another kid with, with math, where is that useful? That was the, I used the example you gave about contracts. If you get paid X number of dollars, you want to know what to do with that. You know, that's actually important. And it's tailoring it so that they see the details that they're learning in school can be applied somewhere else. And my point of bringing up that piece of it, in addition to what you were just finished saying, is translating this message to them. My strategy is just keep hammering them with details, 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 whether it's on the ice, off the ice. And some kids won't be reachable. Like some kids just will never get it. But a lot of kids, it just takes getting them to make the connection, you know? So like for some of them, when I was doing that, this exercise in, in the class today, I was like, so like, how does math relate to, to hockey? Like, why would that be important? You know? And they say, you know, angles and stuff on the ice. That was like their first, first thing. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's cool. Let's try Trigonometry. to. Trigonometry. Yeah. I was like, let's try to get a better answer. Like, what's a better answer? And they would be like, well, I don't know, like counting stats or like these kinds of things. And none of it was an actual, a tangible thing. And I was like, well, what about when you get your first, your first paycheck or your signing bonus? And now it's like, oh, now I'm, well, what about it? You know? And they want to hear. And it's like, yeah, this actually relates to that, you know? And they can, okay, now I can see that the detail of math class that I need to learn down the road could end up being useful. And if that makes them care 1% more in math class, like, good, we did, we did the right thing. If on the ice you're explaining to them, get inside the dots to shoot, and you can say, or get within seven feet of the net because Hyman did it, and look at, look at all the good things that have happened with him. It's like now they can say, oh, okay. And you're, you're plugging it in. You know, you're putting the piece together for them that maybe they wouldn't have. And that's the whole job of the coach. That's why it's important to say the why and explain the reason behind things. And all this stuff has to be there. Otherwise, the kids don't know. So it's one thing to say, you know, the details are important and, and all this. But you, you, as the person who knows better, you have to be the connection maker for them. You know, so that's kind of the, just when we're talking about details, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, that's the role that you should be playing yeah. with the kids, you know? Yeah. So, so and, and you can, it, like the drill this morning, you can teach the how, the why, the what, and they can know what to do, but if they don't, aren't willing to do it, then that's a whole different issue and that's on them, but that's where we would try to help. Yeah. And, and that's, that that's my, that's my, my sentence I use sometimes is that to know and not to do is not to know. Cause if you knew what to do, if you knew. I forget how it goes now. But to know and not to do is not to know. Just simply means you know what to do. If you're not willing to do it or not do it, that means you actually still don't know. Yeah, for sure. Right. And, so yeah, that's, and you can that's, see that. that's a that's another piece of, of teaching that is important to teach kids is to the why and and try to build a desire to do it. And then some kids will never do it. And that's what separates guys from moving on and et cetera. Yeah, I was I was on the ice last night and I had a U, U11 and a U13 group. So, and they all, they're all travel, so they're fine um, in terms of their ability at base, at a, as a baseline. But I, I'm paying very close attention to how, like, how much are they actually listening? You know, I'm paying very close attention to that because the other part of where you could just be so frustrated as a coach or a teacher or what, a parent, whatever, is just trying to get kids to care about something they just don't care about, you know? and tailoring what you're doing to make it age, age appropriate. Um, and I'm finding like increasingly the, the, it's not that they don't listen, it's that the attention span is not there. So they're only interested for so long. And so when you're trying to translate some of these messages to younger kids, I still think it's important to do that, but they're only gonna listen for so long before they check out. As they get older, they'll listen for longer, you know? So I think for me, what I try to do is still plug in some of that stuff, but you can't let yourself get bogged down and frustrated by the fact that the kid in line is turned around facing the other way or they're whacking each other with their sticks or whatever. It's like, you just, you just can't let that be a deterrent because that is built into the system. Like that's, what's going to happen. So I think the strategy, the younger the kids are with this kind of teaching on the detail side is just short, short and sweet. You yeah. Know, and one bite and at a time. Yeah. Just a little bit. So we're doing like 15 minutes of skating half that time in shooting, half that time in stick handling, and then we're playing. And that's how we structure it with these young groups. And it's beautiful. They're, they're all so excited to play. And I can dangle that with them and say, hey, pay attention for 15, and then we're going to a game. You know, or pay attention for five more minutes, and we're going to a game. You know, or this will work when you go play the game in five minutes. You know what I mean? So I think that piece of it is And that's the too. nice way of doing it? Yeah. Like, that's, a, that's the nice way? 
Uh, cause I was, I was just having these thoughts this morning. Um, it's, it's, I know when, when I, when I used to play, it wasn't the nice way. It was just do it. If you don't do it, get off the ice. And I was, I was more as a coach. I, I still lean that way, but I've been probably with the younger guys, I've been more tolerant or maybe it's, maybe that's not the right word. It's might be more, um, accepting or working around it or I just don't feel like losing my shit every five minutes. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. But I, I, I almost would I like the, the way it, the dangle, the thing in front of them, because like a lot of people say kids have changed, like they have in a lot of ways, but I also wouldn't mind it to be a little bit more military style. You know what I mean? Like what, what we deal with in, in our, that situation when, if you have a team, if it's just a team, I think you can be a little bit more, um, I mean, you always have to show the why, but I think you could have, if it's just a team, it's, you could treat it a little bit more military style. I, I use that as an extreme word, but more, uh, I say you, you do. Uh, I, I, well, sorry, can I cut, yeah. cut you off for a second? So as an example, cause I do this as well. And mm. this is where, sorry to cut you off. I'm no, going to no, go, okay, go on a tear for a second. This is where I think the experience of actually coaching is important because you can gauge when to use which tool. So for these like U11, U13 kids I have on Tuesdays. It's a mix of kids at various levels of travel. So, right? Wh- wh- which, uh, the on kids, the ice? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like military style with them. They just don't care that much. So I can be as military as I want. And then it's just not fun and they don't want to come out and learn. With my older guys, it's straight military style. So like for them, like I have them send me a picture of the dressing room after the game to make sure it's clean. When we're eating in the lobby, I have them send me a picture of the lobby after to make sure it's clean. The bus, same thing. Show me that you guys are getting your shit done so that nobody thinks you're a goof. And that makes sense and works at that level, you know, and they respond to that. But the experience piece, like, on, again, yesterday we're doing some skating and there's a kid that's doing one of the drills that he just is not comfortable on his blades yet. So he can't get the drill I'm showing. He just can't. He's not there yet. So he kind of almost half does it on one of his legs and not the other. If I can't stop him, I can't stop him and, and take an extra five minutes to show him properly because he still won't do it properly. He needs time to still be on his edges. Yeah, he's got to figure it out. And that's where the experience, if I try to go military style on that kid, that's, uh, that, that's a loss. You know what I mean? So the, my point of interrupting you was that experience part will help you better understand when to use which tool because you can see it. You know, you've seen what works and what doesn't in situation X or whatever, you know? So... Yeah. Yeah. So all my point was, is that there's a, there's like, I'm just looking at our, uh, the business model and stuff. It's when you're, when you're charging money for people to come out and skate and it's very often like that style doesn't, it can work, but they're also paying. So like take the Academy, for example, if they're there every day and they're paying money, it's like the, the Academy has to be like all, all day like that, or like a mix of it. And it's like, like it, it can get old fast on the, on the very, this is how it's got to be. Be here at nine o'clock. Blah blah blah. That's it's a different ball game. Yeah, you got to find the balance. No, I, don't know. I, I don't know if sure. I said that very clearly, but there's anyways. No, I I agree though. It's you have to find, and year to year it could be different too. Like even with the academy, like if the rules are this, well, and this, this is it, my it comes, group. It comes back to what I said is like when you have so much ice, like if so much ice is, I don't think it can be like that every day. No, because there, it's right. like maybe. They, they've had so much ice over the over the year. Maybe right now it's just like I'm here because I have to be here. And the reason no. you why is the like what is the reason that you know that is because you've seen it for how many years now? You know that's why you know that because on paper it's like okay if I do this this will work. You know what I mean? So, um, so anyways, I think just kind of I guess kind of finishing up. I wanted to touch on like a little bit more tangible for people to to walk away from. So if when we're talking about details specific to the game now, I just want to go like. We, and you can do this as fast as you want. I want you to go through details, D zone, neutral zone, offensive zone for a forward and a defenseman of like, what, what, what are we talking about when we say details? So just give me like a, a couple examples. So if you start with, a, let's say a forward in the D zone, like some examples of yeah, what Yeah, well, I would say actually forward and D in the D zone. It's, it's, it's the willingness to get back. Like first, first of all, it's the willingness of the details of maybe even overworking. 
You know, sometimes you hear you over back checked, but that's not a bad thing necessarily. Well, that's better than the other way. That's what I mean. Yeah. So let's just say you're trying out for a team where you're trying to make impressions and stuff like that. <clears throat> if you over back check, meaning you come back as hard as you can over and over and over, that's that's only a problem if it's like too much work, you can correct it. But I'd rather see that detail be ingrained in someone's brain so that they they're thinking like that's a real important detail because it is and a lot of times that gets lost guys can take the easy way out or just don't think that they or they can kind of bullshit and say oh i did work hard so like that would be one you can fix the kid that over back checks or comes back way too hard because you could start teaching them when and where and, and, and roots and stuff like that, right? And then the forward and D in the D zone, it's just like learning a couple things. It's learning to pounce on those loose pucks, like be very, very aggressive and like be first. And when you're young, if you do it right or wrong, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you're doing it, right? That you're, you're paying attention. The other thing on that would be not cheating your D zone. So you're not blowing the zone looking for the goal necessarily or the long bomb pass. You're looking at making the, um, like maybe not even, the, I'm not going to say the hard play, but the play that needs to be a happen, like first things first. And I think that's important. And then the other thing would be in the willing to, like, it's not, I don't know how to really say it. Like it's be willing to be able to get in front of a shot. Um, that's important. It's not necessarily important that you block it when you're seven or 12, but the willingness to get in those shot lanes and learn it would be willing to get there and get there quick. And then don't quit in the D zone. That's just another detail that might seem pretty simple, but how many times do you see someone going to the net and the body language on guys are like, ah, we'll just see if the goalie stops it. But just getting that detail of like, finish it, like go play that play till the end. You don't know if he bobbles it or if you can catch him. So in the D zone, that's what I would uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. When when other well, I guess when other team well, let's just go to the neutral zone first. I'll come. I'll circle back to that after. So neutral zone, uh, same thing. Bo forward versus D. I don't know if there's a split or you want to do the same thing, same, both at the same time. But uh, I think it's a little different. But it's a it's a it's a little different. Like, I mean, part of it. Like I was gonna say, like. You got, you got to learn the game a little bit. But let's just say in the neutral zone that you learn how to build speed, like going offensively. You learn how to build speed. You learn how to slash for pucks, not just wait for pucks. Yeah. Learn how to get in those um, in those lanes, right? And um, and for for D as well, just learning proper gaps and, and little things like that, not to get too far ahead, not too far behind. Um, know when to jump into rushes. Um, but from a defending standpoint is, is just the will to defend. Like I would say that more than anything because like, because I, I, I it might sound like a copo, but it really isn't. It's just the will to defend. So I know a lot of young kids wouldn't even know what that means. Like, like syst as far as systems go, but it's the will to, to maybe catch a guy in the neutral zone. That's, that's to me is important because I know if the will's there, to do the work, then the will will probably be there to learn details as they get older. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, like, that's why a lot of times when people talk to about, um, I'll use an example. Okay. So there's a kid in the OHL that that's very good. He can skate, makes plays, blah, 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 blah. Like, like really, really, really high end. At the same time, he has a lot of turnovers because um, sometimes he just tries to do too much or, May, I think sometimes maybe he's thinking ahead of other guys, which was a real a brain thing. Sometimes I think it could just be simpler. But for me, he battles. He has a skill. He can skate. If he loses it, he, he tries to recover as hard as he can. But he makes mistakes doing it. So my question is, my question or my observation is at the next level, is it fixable? Is it? I, I think it is because they'll simplify his game. But the will to do the things are there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For sure. So that's, yeah, you that's the thing. The, so if you see the, the indicators are there. Yeah, yeah. So if you see the will and the, like the, you got the talent and the will, then I think that you, anything is fixable. So like in any zone that you're playing, so we'll go to the offensive zone now. 
It's if you've never went to the net hard, if you're always waiting for the easy pass, that's something that you might want to look at. Like try getting to that net, try to bang in, um, try to bang in a rebound, try being first on the puck instead of second or third. Um, defenseman, you know, like sometimes it might be try pinching. Sometimes it might be try um, uh, holding the line. Sometimes it's maybe you're just playing too simple. You're just dumping it in the corner. You're not thinking. You're not trying. So try doing the things. Like make efforts to make plays. And I think if you see, um, I think if you see the effort in any zone, whether it's back checking, shooting, making play, whatever it is, I think that if you see the intent is there, the will is there, then I think that you, then it gives you hope. So if I'm picking a team, you know, going back to our tryout stuff, kids go into a tryout and you might not be the best player. But I see that you like in this tryout, you're you're the hardest back checker on the ice like every time. You're no good at it, by the way. You don't get the pucks or or but the effort is just there. It's like I like that. I'm going to like that. It's going to, I'm going to see it because I think with that, I can, I can help you in a lot of different ways. Right. Yeah. If I see on the, on the four check that you, you know, I see you have skill, but you don't want to do any of the hard work. Then it, it, I, I think twice about you, but if I, if, if you are doing the, the, the grindy work and the, the hard work, that's, what's going to really stick out to me. And to go back to like, for me to go back right to the beginning of our podcast today, it's, the guys that I talked about today that sign their NHL contracts, they do all the details, the hard, hard things, right? They're willing to sacrifice a hit to make a play. They're willing to hit. They're willing to fight. They're willing to go to the net. They're willing to win, you know, be a team guy. And, um, you know, most guys that sign obviously are like that. Yeah. I think for me, the, the hard part about this stuff too is because depending on the, who the audience is, like if you get real specific, they may or may not know what you're talking about. But um, I want to I want to just point out a couple of them fr- that I think of when I think of this stuff. And if you don't know it, like this is good because it'll be the first time you heard it, and then you can go learn about it. Because um, if I go back to the neutral zone, um, I think the first thing if I'm if we're forward and we have the puck, like it's a regroup, it would be exact exactly the same thing you said, like get it, moving your feet to get to passing lanes. That's the most frustrating thing as a coach to see is when the D has the puck looking for a guy and everyone's like floating back to get to lanes. That's a big one. Being on D side of guys when you don't have the puck, another easy one. Being aware of what's going on around you, like actually checking who's around you, you know. And then D, it's it's being inside the dots, moving your feet towards the pass that you're making, getting good gap ups when we don't have the puck. Those are just a couple of quick things. Neutral zone that that are easy to to figure out. Um, and then offensive zone, it's the exact same thing you said, like being first on the puck. It's the easiest thing, or maybe not the easiest. It's the simplest thing. You know, it's so simple to just. Get on it, man. No matter what, just get on it. And it stands out. And it stands out when you don't do it. You know, it's very easy to see. Defensemen, like on the blue line, not getting sucked in and taking your space away, getting shots through from the blue line, not having them blocked. Like these are some things that finding passing lanes as a forward, like find a pocket where you're actually useful and open. Like these are some things that you actually will be watched or things that will actually be watched. We're we're trying to find these things, you know? So if you're going into your tryout or your camp or your whatever, these are the things, man. Like these are the things. Assuming you can pass, skate, shoot, which everybody can, once you get to the higher levels, that stuff's not good enough. You know, you have to be starting to check into some of these other things. And it's, it's very. I don't want to say it's easy because I remember being there, and it's not easy if you're not sure, you don't know. But if you start to do some of these things, the jump that you get on other guys is so obvious. It's just so noticeable by everyone that's watching. You know. So if you care at all about that kind of stuff which you should if you plan on playing at a higher level, then the sooner you start to pay attention to some of those things, and it just it doesn't have to be everything. It could just be a few things. Like you always say, you know, find three things. It could be find three new things. A hundred percent. Find three things could that be, you want to do. It could be a simple thing. Like you might not even be the biggest guy. You might be the biggest guy, but like I see a lot of guys along the wall, corners, neutral zone, D zone, whatever, along the wall, and they're fishing for pucks or they're, they're I don't want to say tentative, but they're not aggressive. But maybe maybe just try bullying your way through. You know, kicking it with your skates and just hammering it through people. That gets noticed. You do that three times in a tryout or a, uh, in a game or whatever. It's like people go, okay, this kid's like got some jam to him. For sure. 
Yeah. And I think that's a good strategy. Like even going into a camp or a tryout or whatever you're, you're doing, if you have your strengths and you know your three things, make sure you're on top of those and showing those and then pick three things that maybe you don't think about regularly that you can try to do to stand out that are extra, you know, okay, these are my three things that I know make me a good player. I'm going to focus on those. And then here's three new things that from listening to this podcast or wherever you get the information I know would make me stand out. I'm going to try to do those three things and keep it simple. It doesn't have to be anything that's game changing. You know, if you're not a end to end through everybody guy, that's, that wouldn't be a good thing to pick. You know, that's not so, so keep it simple. And that's something that'll actually help you when you're, uh, when you're at camps or trials or whatever. So, um, I think that's all I had for today. Anything else you want to say or chat about? I'm good. Good to go. Okay, cool. Hope that's helpful. Goodbye.